The war began because Germany wanted to dominate Europe. The, the immediate cause, of course, was the, the, the Balkans with the assassination of the Archduke, uh, Serbia and Russia going to war, and then Germany coming in uh, as a result of that. And then, of course, Britain and France uh, both declaring war on Germany in, on the 4th of August, 1914. In 1914, we have Ireland as a, a country facing crisis, I suppose, with the emergence of a strong demand for Irish self-government, normally called home rule in that period. Um, and then the opposition of Ulster Protestants, essentially, to home rule as a concept and their demand for the maintenance of the Act of Union. As far as Ireland was concerned, uh, the First World War probably stopped a civil war because at that stage uh, the, the aggravation and the agitation over ho home rule had led to the point where you had two massive armed militias in Ireland, the Ulster Volunteer Force and the Irish Volunteers. And there was a very distinct possibility that had the war not started, those two forces would have come into armed conflict. There were many expectations among the young men who went off to war from here. Some of them, of course, were displaying their loyalty to the United Kingdom, uh, so as to prevent home rule. Others were displaying their loyalty to the United Kingdom in order to bring about home rule. And yet there were others whose inspiration would have been the stories of the atrocities being committed by the German army in Belgium. Uh, many of which were actually true and weren't propaganda, as is nowadays the, 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 the perceived wisdom. Uh, so you, you had all of that, plus of course you had many people who simply wanted to be soldiers anyway, and this was the ideal opportunity to do that. The leaders of unionist and nationalist opinion would have pledged their support to the war. There were a large number of young Catholic men from Strapan that would have joined up. Um, in the same way as there were large numbers of young Protestant men who would have joined up. So they were obviously taking their lead from the local leadership and felt that you know, it was a just war. Uh, there would have been at least maybe a thousand uh, uh, natives of Donegal who lost their lives in World War I. And what's seldom mentioned or known is that there were two Donegal ladies uh, who served the medical corps in France and b b both those ladies were killed uh, during World War I. The very beginning of the war, Ebrington was the home to a battalion of the Cheshire Regiment which left here uh, almost as soon as war was declared. In fact, I think they left on the 5th of August to join the British Expeditionary Force, taking the, the Great Northern Railway to Dublin and, and shipping out via Dublin to France. Thereafter, Ebrington is used uh, as a training base largely for the Royal Enniskilling Fusiliers. Normally uh, what happened was uh, the local battalion, there would have been an army there already, and they visited the town seeking out recruits. Uh, indeed, uh, Strabane provided for the size of the town, Strabane provided a, a tremendous amount of men for, to fight uh, for, for freedom in World War I. In 1914, there was a very real spirit of adventure among young people, and it was, it was something that was built up as well by the media of the day. You've got, for example, local newspapers such as the Derry Journal here, which is perceived as a very strong nationalist paper, actually encouraging people to enlist. You've got the Catholic bishops encouraging people to enlist. You've got the war being portrayed as a crusade uh, for right against German domination against the evil of the Kaiser's Germany. A rather unique one now, if you see this mountain hill, breezy hill out here, the other side of that there's a townland called Kaiknahorna, and there was a Duffy family who lived there, and they, some of them moved into Scotland afterwards, but four of those Duffy brothers joined up the forces in World War I, and the four of them lost their lives. This is the only family, I think, uh, that have lost four brothers. In the, in, in the conflict. Well, the, the role of the UVF, uh, 
I suppose uh, Britain looked to Ireland for recruits and as I say, Carson's army provided a battalion uh, from the local area. There would have been, most of them would have joined the, the Enniskilling Fusiliers, the 9th Battalion. No dinner on? No. I was expecting you back at the shop. I've been busy. I went to join up. I got papers today. Papers for what? I'm going to join the war, fight for my country. Have you not enough to be doing in the shop? I want to make something of my life. In some field in France. Better than wasting my time in this backwater. Aye. And end up like Eric Irwin and, and Seamus Toner. At least they died for something. What the soldiers who went to France encountered was a form of warfare that was uh, brutally Napoleonic. It was large numbers of men and fixed lines after the end of 1914. And those fixed lines were uh, demarcated by trenches on both sides, a line of about 400 miles from the North Sea to the Swiss frontier. It meant, of course, that uh, without tanks at that time and with not enough artillery, that the only way in which to make an advance was to do it with infantry. The casualties were horrendous. On the 1st of July 1916, five battalions of the Royal Enniskilling Fusiliers took part in the advance. Now that's about 4,000, slightly more, maybe 4,500 men. At the end of the day, when all the casualties had been counted up, the Enniskilling Fusiliers had lost 2,200 men, dead, wounded or missing. Don't worry, Archie. I'll see you through this, I promise. Promise? We'll get through it together. We'll be back in Straban in no time. I don't think I'll ever see Straban again. He will. We both will. There's no doubt that what happened in France had its impact uh, on, on the development of, of politics and of the new state of Northern Ireland because it was seen that the men of the 36th Ulster Division had made uh, a sacrifice, had, uh, in Professor Keith Jeffrey's words, it was Ulster's blood sacrifice to equal that of the 1916 rebellion in Dublin. Well, I suppose the contribution uh, was tremendous. It's the freedom which we enjoy today. I suppose you can say they, they gave their tomorrow for our today.